My name is Matt Nixon. I am a comic book writer. I have been writing comic books since about 1997, 1998. Uh, I went to the University of Michigan where I studied English and philosophy. And when I graduated, I had the single-minded goal of moving to New York City and writing Wolverine for Marvel Comics. Uh, moved there and just started banging on doors. And within about three years, I had my first assignment. And that turned out to be a miniseries called Conan. And then I got some Marvel fill-in work from there. And I ended up doing some fill-in work on Wolverine for about six months uh, back in 2002. And that was probably the highlight of my career so far. Uh, after that, I wrote a few stories here and there, but I mainly just got into journalism and social media and ended up living in Los Angeles for a long time, uh, where I tried my hand writing film and TV, but that did not pan out. Uh, however, I am back into comic books after many years, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to break into comics and what that means. So. For starters, let's be honest with ourselves. If you want to be a comic book creator, you have to understand that there's not a lot of money in selling comic books. Uh, if you are good enough that someday you have a job working for Marvel Comics, you may be paid a pretty good sum for your books and for your page rate. You might have a nice page rate and you may actually sell some books and get what's called a royalty check out of that. And that's all very nice, but those moments don't last very long unless you are at the top of your game. There are probably, at any given time, five to ten fully working comic book creators who are doing licensed work. Um, there may be some guys who are, and, and girls who are doing some books for a, a year at a time or maybe two years, but it's never really a permanent thing. And, and, and there's exceptions to every rule, but what you want to do if you're going to break into comics is not only like work towards writing licensed stuff, but you want to be able to create your own property. So that's going to be a little bit of what I'm focusing on today to give you an idea of how that works. So, <clears throat> all ideas start with the writer. Now you may get an editor that says, I want you to come up with this idea, yada, yada, and so forth. But what we're talking about right now for our story today we're talking about writing our own comic book, our own creator, our own comic book. So what you need to do is start with that idea now. If you're sitting at dinner one night and you come up with this idea, I want to write a story about a superhero who lives in the sewer and comes out at night to avenge crime because he's got bad skin and doesn't like the sun, well then, that's a good start actually. Let's start there because most comic book characters are somewhat the freakish type of character, correct? Um, so. Start out with a nice story, but start writing now, because it's gonna change and it's gonna evolve. What started out as this kind of simple character will turn into somebody who is much more developed, if you're doing it right, and has much more of a personality to them, so that when you're showing this character to other people and they're reading about this character, you want them to be interested, you want them to want more. So what you start out with when you decide, okay, I've got my idea, now I wanna start putting pen to paper. You need to outline your idea. So what you want to do is to figure out what your first story is going to be. I think all of us here are familiar enough with comics that we know that the stories can seem to end and then they can start all over again with uh, the same character but maybe slightly different tweaks, uh, new costume. Uh, lately it's been all the rage to change genders or to change uh, uh, racial features, that type of thing. That's always been something that's been fun to do as well. Um, so. Don't think of your character as being permanently like this. They will grow and evolve. That's the nature of comic books to begin with. It's serialized entertainment. So your character can grow and evolve with the story. So where do you start? Start thinking about writing a script. That's how all comic books are written. They're written by breaking down the panels that you see on each page. When you pick up a comic book, there's certain languages that you need to learn. Uh, the best book I can recommend to anybody in this room is Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. If you are interested in writing comics, he will break it down for you. What the balloons are called, what the thought balloons are called, why certain words are um, black, uh, darker black than others, why they're bold. It shows emphasis when they're talking. 
Why do sound effects work the way they work? How do panels progress in terms of do they go from here to here, like the way we read, or do they go from here down? You know, that type of thing. It will, it's just basic education so you know when you're laying out your comics how they're going to work. So some of the basic language we're talking about is panels, right? Pages and what's called a splash page. That's when you take up a whole page to tell part of your story. Uh, you save those for the big moments in your, in your story. So, <clears throat> as you're progressing, and as you're getting ready to make your story, remember to keep notes. Keep copious amounts of notes. Keep a roll, uh, 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 a notebook with you at all times, not just digital. Keep a physical notebook with you, you're writing down your notes because if you put it in a digital format, you will tend to lose this. Trust me on this. I keep notes on my um, iPhone all the time, but because of the way that it works, you kind of forget about notes that are way down the list, and you don't go back through them. When you have notebooks and you're trying to figure out where you were going with your story, you can always refer to those notebooks and we'll pull you right back in and help you off. So, <clears throat> figure out what kind of a story are you going to try to tell. In comic books, you, you, st you really think of the superhero story as the main story of comic books. That's not necessarily true these days. Now there's a lot of detective stories in comic books. There are a lot of sports stories in comic books. The Japanese have uh, really done a great job with this in their manga. There's a, a comic book called President Dad. Um, and it's about this girl growing up with her father being the president of Japan, or the prime minister in this case, but it's called President. At any rate, uh, you don't just have to think of your, your story being a superhero story. You can start from the beginning of thinking, hey, I want this to be a movie. And a lot of people will start with comic books if they want to maybe someday make a movie. Because comic books are accessible. I will tell you, you could self-publish a comic book online for free. You can practically for the price of printing the book, and there are some printers in the audience, for the price of printing the book, um, you can publish a comic book. If you're willing to, if you can find somebody who will work for you for free as an artist, and you're willing to do the work yourself for free, you can do this for a very low bar to, for entry. And the payoff can be massive. I'm looking right here at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, back in the early 80s, that was a comic book that most people didn't even really care about. It was just kind of a jokey comic book. It was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was a spoof on Frank Miller and what he was doing with Batman uh, and Daredevil. And so they kind of uh, it evolved this funny little storyline and it became massive. And to this day, it's still making money. So there are some people who go in there with this idea of, I want to make this property that can become a film. I myself came in saying I want to make a property that probably would be very difficult to become a film because I wanted to make a property that was strictly a comic book property. But that's me and I'm a little bit crazy. Um, and I'm not that motivated by trying to make that, uh, that into the money. I'm, I'm trying to enrich comic books myself. So um, when you figure out what your story is, write, 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 okay? If you're not writing every day, you're doing yourself a disservice. Every artist that I know that works in comic books draws every day. Every writer I know writes every day, even if it's just for a couple minutes. Most writers will tell you to carve out two hours a day to sit in front of your computer, even if it means you're not gonna write anything. So me, as a professional writer, daily I get up and I will get my act together and by nine o'clock I'm sitting in front of the computer and I dedicate nine to 11, nine to lunchtime strictly for writing. One quick question. Yes, sir. It's about you, per you said it's computer to come up an idea, but what, what, and I, you don't have to tell me too much, what do you read? What do I read? Yeah, I just oh, I read, I read a, a, an array of things, not just comic books. And the, the more that I read, uh, I read classic novels, I read current popular fiction, uh, I expose myself to a wide array of now, genres. Here's something really dumb but kind of critical. Do you read other people's comic books? I do, but I read less of them these days than I used to. I, I'm very selective about who I'll read. I'm not. I don't chase characters. I chase writers these days. There are certain writers that I would like to be as good as. Have you gotten to the point that that somewhere in your life you read so many comic books though, and you have a tendency, you know, everybody borrows some other people's ideas, mm -hmm. and then they give them that. Yeah, there's nothing new under the and sun. How, is, how do you keep from doing that? 
but there's nothing new under the sun. If you if you didn't want to do that, you would have to stop. But let's hold I'll hold questions, and then at the end, I'll be happy. I'm going to save some time. Yeah, I'd yeah, be more than happy to answer some of the questions at the end. We'll save some time for that. But when you're getting your ideas, don't sit in front of the computer until you have your idea. Okay, get your idea first. Get it in the shower. Get it when you're riding your bike. Get it when you're walking to the grocery store. Get your idea first, and then sit down with your idea and let it grow and breathe. But sitting down in front of the computer and staring at a blank screen is one of the hardest things you'll ever do as a writer. So you want to have something you can get down, at least the title, for example. So give yourself that. And remember, just because you're writing something doesn't mean it's set in stone, okay? Even if it's in your computer, it's easy enough to erase. I have five different versions of Retcon, and I think Retcon actually includes stuff that I've been writing since I was 12 years old. So there's stuff from my, my notes that I've been telling you, keep your notes. When I decided I wanted to do my own book, I went back to my old notes and I said, these are the things that I cared about and I wanted to explore as a writer, and this is what I found, and this is what I came out with. So, sit down, write. I call it writing dirty. Don't think about how many issues it's gonna be. Don't think about, can I do a space comic book? Can I do a comic book underwater? Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Do whatever you wanna do. Write dirty, and then go back and edit your stuff clean. Okay, so just get it down, get your idea down, barf it out on paper. If you write 10 pages of an idea and you come out of it with three sentences that are solid, that's great. That's amazing because that's really hard to do. It's like photography. Photography is take as many pictures as you can, right? Take as many pictures as you can. That's exactly it. Now, next thing, <clears throat> it's comic books, it's a visual medium. You need an artist. Now, if you're an artist yourself, fantastic. You will be successful because now you can write and draw your own comic books and publish them online as a webcomic. Anybody can do that and you can actually be discovered. There are several webcomic creators who are now high-end comic book creators. Kate Leth is one of them. Um, it's actually where they're finding many of the people of color and the diversity in comics is because they're able to see there aren't, the gatekeepers aren't there if you're able to just put your stuff up there. There's nobody can stop you from getting into the editorial room that way. They can, they will see your stuff. So we'll get back to webcomics in a second. But what you need to do is find an artist. Where you can find artists, DeviantArt. You can find them on Twitter and just Google webcomics. Come up with at least three different domains that you can go to that will have great webcomics. Webcomics are a little bit after my time. I started the hard way by trying to break in at Marvel, which is, I don't think people should even try to do that anymore. It's, it, I broke in, I got in, and I got an assignment writing Wolverine, and a lot of people felt like that was a little too soon for a guy who had never really written his own comic books to be writing Wolverine. So the critical backlash on that was pretty fierce. I recommend starting with Creator Own. That's the best way to do it. Don't go in trying to write Captain America or Superman. It's a big mistake. Wait till they come to you. <clears throat> so, first step is finding an artist. <clears throat> you may not find the artist that you want in terms of, hey, I want uh, a guy as good as George Perez to draw my storyline. You may not find that person. But what you may find is somebody who's going to take your scripts, read your scripts, which almost nobody's going to do when you're starting out. This person will actually read your script and try to translate them into a visual format for you. That person who is interested in your project is way better than somebody you're trying to pay to draw your project for you because then they want to do this with you. So make sure that you scout artists on like DeviantArt and on Twitter, but get get a relationship with them. Reddit's another good one. There's writing there's a, a writing comic subreddit. I don't know if anybody in here uses Reddit, but it's an excellent, excellent resource. Um, then once you get your artists together, you're gonna need a colorist. You could go black and white if you like, but it's not that expensive to use a colorist these days because back in the day it used to be they had to paint or color your actual physical piece of art. Now colorists can use Photoshop or any number of programs, Illustrator, that type of thing, to color your books for you. So finding a colorist is actually easier now than it ever has been before. So you can find that's going to add that dimension to your book or story. So you want to have a colorist. Then, the next thing you want to do is find a way to get this thing published. You can do it at a, zero, do it at a Kinko's. Sit next to a, a copy machine and do it there. It's what's called an ash can. 
when you print the thing out on regular 9 by 11 paper and then you fold it in half and make a comic book out of that. That's how we all kind of start. We make these ash cans and that's what we do. Uh, work to connect uh, with people once you have your physical comic book. What you may want to do is look at your regional shows. There are comic book conventions everywhere. Right here today, this is a place where you could meet other artists. Shadow is taking pictures right now. He is a writer. He's probably looking for other artists. You know, this is the this is the way you do it. You build the community. The community is actually already in place. You need to introduce yourself to the community and get involved, and you'll find other people to help you make your vision a reality. So, think about it. Once you get to the point where you have an artist who's going to collaborate, how you want to structure your book. Okay. The best structure, in my opinion, is a mini-series, because a mini-series is sort of unlimited. You get to do four issues, it's over, but then you get to start all over again, and it's almost as if it's a continuing series. A mini-series doesn't really lock you in you like you might think. Plus, it gives a natural break in between uh, volumes of your book. One of the things that will really hurt you the most at the market is if you're putting out a book, but you miss a month. And people will see that gap. If you miss three months, it could be a really important book. And people may just stop reading it. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to be sensitive to your audience because comic book fans are sensitive. They're a sensitive audience because they're in, they, they deeply love these characters. And it will shock you if you do create your own storyline, how fast they fall in love with your characters and take ownership over your characters. I've created all these characters and I've had people come at me and say, you can't do that to so-and-so. I'm like, man, I created so-and-so. <laughs> I get to do that. But no, it, that actually does become an issue with people. You have to understand that you're communicating. You're communicating your emotions with other people and you're giving them some ownership here. So think about the format you want it to be in. Do you want it to be in a mini-series so that if it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to, you can abandon that format and try it again in a different way? Or do you want to try to do the ongoing thing where you're serious, I'm going to do this thing on a webcomic format where I'm once a week, I'm going to update this thing with one page of work and I'm going to do this until I'm, you know, 35 years old and that's going to be 15 years of my work, you know, I'm going to do this. If you're dedicated like that, you will build an audience and you will find yourself working in a print medium eventually at that point, if that's your goal. Some people strictly want to work in webcomics. I've approached a couple of uh, highly respected webcomic artists and ask them if they would like to join me on a project and they don't want to do printed work. They want to do their webcomic because that's a labor of love and that's what they're into. So again, let's talk about this difference between self-publishing and licensed work. Licensed work is when you're working on somebody else's property that they own. So you're being told how you're going to be able to do it. And you have to work within a certain framework that they're asking you to work within. Um, you can't, for example, have Batman suddenly become a heavy drinker. It's been done, but I mean, it just doesn't fit the character. He has a certain code. And alcohol will erode your body, and this man is all about having a body that's a perfect weapon. He cannot drink alcohol. It just isn't compatible with the character. So you have to understand, if you go in to write Batman as an alcoholic, you're going to be kicked out. You're not, they're not going to be interested in your storyline. So what you want to think of is, is uh, do I want to have an alcoholic character who's like Batman? Sure, you can do that then. Call him your own character, make him your own character, and self-publish that character. That's absolutely fine to do. And it goes back to uh, his question about, can you kind of spin other characters? Pretty much every character you're encountering in comic books is an archetype of some character in mythology that's been around for tens of thousands of years. So you're pretty safe as long as you don't take the powers and the personalities and put them together the same, in the same combination. If you've got a savage guy with claws, they're going to think Wolverine immediately. If you've got a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde character, they're going to think of the Hulk immediately. No, Fair is mentioning that that's based on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And the one I, that image came out with that looked like Captain America, and everybody kept claiming, well, they did copy. Was that the Super Patriot or somebody like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, and, and that's the thing, is I think that uh, 
comic books where you're allowed to do that, you're allowed to take a character and just tweak them just a little bit. Yeah. You have you have Dark Side and you have Thanos. They're kind of very similar characters. Dark Side came first, and then there's Thanos. Okay. Uh, you've got Batman and and well, I guess Iron Man would be his analog. They're very similar characters. Spider Man and Daredevil. Spider Man and Daredevil. Well, they're from the same company. Even. Yeah. So you get that you get that kind of thing happening, and I think that's what makes Wolverine and Hulk interesting. Is they're the savage men who yeah. can't control their animal sides, and that's two unstoppable forces meeting each other. It's it's a fascinating story. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, that's the oldest story and most important story in the book. The yeah. unsolvable force meets the immovable object. If that's what your story is, by the way, you are bringing people from the unstoppable force and the immovable object here to them meeting somewhere in your crescendo of conclusion and creating a massive explosion when they meet. That's when things go off. And that's why I think we love comics so much, because it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, they literally go off. A lot of times, you literally have explosions. I mean, look around the room. Wow, oh, smash, wham. I mean, that is what makes comic books so much fun. And that's, that's the other thing about comics is, remember, you can do whatever you want in these things. You really can have license to do whatever you want in comic books. And that's why, I'll tell you, in my experience, self-published self work just is so much better than doing licensed work. Because say you do write Batman for a number of years, you might be known as a guy who did this and that with Batman and made him cool and that kind of thing. Probably not though. Uh, but if you create Spawn, like Todd McFarlane did, well, there's Spawn, right? So this is this is what you want to consider. It's the long play. And I think a lot of people really just want to go in and go, I don't like the way they're writing Wolverine, so I want to write Wolverine my way and I got this idea. That's hubristic and it's not going to get you very far. That's not what you want to do. What you want to be thinking is, is how can I exhibit my talent and get it out there into the marketplace and then build an audience? <clears throat> Once you're there, then you can start targeting comic books that you want to make your mark on. Say I want to write Black Panther. Uh, this is how it works. I have a comic book that I've written and a couple other comic books in my archives that I've written in the past. I will take those in a package and I will write my idea for what I would do with Black Panther. It's called a pitch. A pitch to editors. Now we're assuming at this point you've self-published a book. You've cut your teeth on either a web comic or a self-published book of some kind. Even if it's an ash can and three people read it, you've done something to show an editor who sits behind a desk and controls Batman. This is a person who says, this storyline works, this storyline doesn't work, this artist should work with this writer, blah, blah, this is the most powerful person in comics, the editor. So, once you decide, hey, this is the character I'm gonna write, I have this Black Panther story in my head that I have to get out. What you do is you sit down and write your pitch, and think about a pitch this way. A pitch has to be very simple, has to be very quick, and it's more about tone than about the plot. You have to attract someone who's very, very busy, who's doesn't really necessarily have time to read these pitches, you have to attract them with this first sentence about what you're going to do. This is what the story is about. You should be able to break your story down into three sentences. If you can't break your story down into three sentences, you don't know what your story is about. If somebody says, what's it about, and you can't answer that in one sentence, you probably don't know what you've written. So think about what it is you're writing and why. Once you have that kind of mapped out, that should be stuck on front of you, in front of you, on like your computer wall or wherever you keep your information, so that you remember that's what this story is about that I'm writing every day. And then the pitch is three simple paragraphs, beginning, middle, end. Here's what I think should happen. Here's how it happens, and here's what happens after it does happen. That is all the information you need to get to an editor to get them interested in what you're going to do. Then you're going to start to develop your story with an editor. So, to recap, you needed to have at this point collaborated with somebody, unless you're just one of these freaks who can do everything themselves, and God bless you, and you will be a success no matter what. But at this point, you should have worked with an artist. You possibly worked with an editor or somebody behaving as an editor. In my case, it's uh, my wife and then a fellow comic book writer who are my editors. Uh, so you've collaborate, you, you collaborate with an artist most important. So you have this collaborative ability. Hopefully you have a job, by the way. I should back up completely and say, 
do not throw well, your income coming into yeah you, please yeah. please have a job while you're trying to break into comic books or do it while you don't need a job if mm -hmm. you're still in high school you're in college and you can do it during the summer that type of stuff because it's very very hard to make money in comics it's very very hard to make money in comics uh, don't look at it as a way to end your need to have a job either have a job <laughs> then use comics as maybe your lottery ticket to get out. It might work that way. Is Steve, Stephen King or none of those guys ever given up grants? Oh, oh they, those that. guys, there are grants. There's, there are actually, this is something that you could research. There is a Zurich grant, for example. It's uh, it's by the, um, it's Laird, Peter Laird. It was Eastman and Laird created Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but he has got the Zurich grant that actually will allow you to write a comic book if it's based on something that that group thinks is Good enough to receive the grant, and that's available. Whole yeah. question is that you kind of ownership. If you do that, though, I mean, I, I, mean, I know it's getting too much detail, but, but I, I, no, it. that's a detail I'll, I'll be happy to get into at the end. Yeah, that's ha what I'm happy to get into. I will tell you, um, kind of helping to represent Image here. If you work with Image, all you have to do is get the book to issue three, which is not easy to do. Three drawn issues, three lettered issues. If you get that to them and approved they publish it for you. That's how Image works. Image doesn't work on really a pitching basis. They will never give you money to publish your book. They will never do anything other than support you in terms of getting printed and distributed throughout all the comic book stores in America. But you need to get it to a certain point first before Image will touch it. And that's another thing. If you do a web comic or you do a self-published comic on your own, Image may come to you and say, we'll publish this for you. It might make it easier. But bear in mind, you are doing this on your own, unless you find a way to support yourself. You get a grant, you win a lottery, you marry a doctor, I don't know, something like that. So uh, once you get to that point, though, where you, you've made your decision, another thing, we're kind of bringing up a notch. Now I'm assuming you guys are publishing, you're not doing ash cans, you're not doing just uh, printing your books at the copy shop and sitting down and tabling at the local shows. Tabling is when you go to a comic book convention, you get yourself a seat on Artist Alley, and you set out your books and you sell them one by one. This is how Nike started, by the way. The dude drove around in his car selling Nikes out of the back of his car. You can do it that way if you believe in your property that much, and I hope if you're gonna spend this much time on an idea that you do believe in it that much. Uh, but once you start to get this stuff out in front of people, um, I kind of lost my track. Let me back that up a bit. Uh, uh, oh, now you're at shows. Now you're in. Now you're in the mix with comics. Now what you need to do is start making friends with other creators. This is how you're going to meet editors. This is how you're going to meet other publishers. Okay. So show your stuff eagerly to other writers and people that you respect. This is one of those mediums. Uh, let's say I wanted to to get into film. It would be really, really hard for me to go buy a convention ticket and go to hang out with Martin Scorsese or something like that. But I can go to any comic book convention and walk into a room where I have access to dozens of creators and artists that I can sit down and talk to because that's what they're there for. So you have really good access to the creators who have made comic books and are continuing to make comic books at comic book conventions. So I'm sure there are some in this area that you, I mean, Nashville's close enough that there's got to be shows there. I know there are shows up in Louisville. There's shows around, so you can go in, meet with creators, and that's how you start to get things done. You need to network. You need to know, who do I need to know? Who do I count on if I want to do my Black Panther comic book? Who's the editor who's in charge of that? Maybe I, maybe I connect with the artist who's currently drawing that book, and he or she can hand that over to the editor for my current book that I'm working on, my baby that homegrown comic book that I've done. That's what your goal is if you want to do a licensed book. But if what you want to do is self-publish a comic book, all you got to do, print it, oh, okay, write it, get it drawn and colored, get it lettered, print it, and find a distribution channel. And that's either going to be online, word of mouth, or at conventions. But then to leverage that, into getting your license to work. Uh, the best way to get your license to work 
is sending in package after package to editor after editor. Now, going back to Stephen King, he said he had a couple of those um, old style restaurant receipt spindles where they would took, stick the receipts on top of them when they were done and he had stacks of rejection letters that filled three of those spindles by the time he got his first acceptance letter. So plan on being rejected, but the nice thing is, is that the way that with, now that we have the internet, now that we have print on demand options, now that we have conventions, you don't have to wait for somebody to approve your project. You can approve your project and as long as you can get a couple bucks together, and find a way to collaborate, you're on the road to making a comic book. It's not as hard as getting a book published. It's not as hard as making a movie, that's for sure. So bear in mind, this can be done. Now, leverage Twitter, leverage Facebook. Use these social medias as your way of getting into the crowd, okay? Twitter is, the place for comic book creators. That's where we all talk for some reason. I don't know why we decided that's where we're gonna be, but we are. I thought it would be in, uh, Instagram, but it's not. Everybody's chatting on Twitter. But that's actually how you can engage your favorite creators on there. Somebody had mentioned Kyle Higgins in here. Um, that's how I got in touch with Kyle Higgins through Twitter, when, then we met at a convention one year. So, and I've had a couple of the people collaborate with me via Twitter, that's how they find me. So make sure that you're Presence on social media is high as well. Make sure that people can find you and make sure that you're interacting with other people. So, I think if you're interested in making a comic book, the field is wide open these days. I do think that if you want to write licensed work based on other people's creations, it's open, but it's not as fun as it used to be. You're gonna have these, you're gonna have a lot of restrictions and your creative direction is going to come from editorial rather than from you. So just bear that type of stuff in mind as well. And at this point, I'll be happy to open up the floor to questions. Anybody want? Yes, sir. The, 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 um, they, the, the, what is the future like in, what, what do we need in, in 10 years from now that you can build that won't be interactive or apply until 10 years from now. Do, do you know where we can find leads on that? Like the Teenage Ninja Turtles, they knew that in the 80s and at the end of the millennium, they were gonna to need to put some few people together and even small groups of four instead of large groups of Avengers, and, which I'm wearing more with Trend, but or Justice League, they needed to slim people down. You're talking about trend spotting? Trend spotting no, is, trend spotting. yeah, trend spotting is, that's a, that's a tricky thing. That's more magic than anything else. It's almost, uh, it's very nuanced, it's like, I think a really good way to start with that would be to ask yourself, what does the world need? Yeah. And I think Stan probably sat back a little bit and said, where is the world right now and what does it need? And he's a little bit more understanding of people who are different from them. Yeah. So he creates the X-Men, which is about misunderstanding. The X-Men was created during the Civil Rights Movement. And, and Stan, for whatever kind of person he is, did see this almost marketing need for acceptance. And he that's where they went with the storyline. So what you're talking about is trend spotting. And I think what the world has got to be worried about going down the road is probably pretty evident if you stop and think about it for a couple of minutes. Yeah. So think about what you want your guys to be fighting or your girls to be fighting. Yeah. Um, in my case, my characters are fighting an inevitable, inevitable end. The world does end in my storyline. The, the world does end? The world does end. It yeah. is an, an inevitability. And what they're doing is jumping from string to string, if you're a fan of string theory at all. They're moving from dimension to dimension and back six months. They're going to watch Quantum Leap. It's, yeah. it's like Quantum Leap on steroids. But there, there you go again. It's that, it's that spinning of, there's nothing new under the sun. You're not going to tell a new story. But what you can do is give it your spin do something interesting with it. And maybe you have an insight into what needs to happen in the world down the road. And you put that on your characters and put it on their back and see if they can solve the problem. Yeah. Cloudy, the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, there was too much and I had to learn to live with less. That's where I think the trend is gonna be in the, in the future. There's, there's so much opportunity, but um, we don't need more tables. We don't need more chairs, we don't need more houses. We just gotta learn to live with a That would be pretty simple. I think that's what that downsizing movie was about too. But I, yeah. a, a word of warning about trend spotting: if you're way too ahead of the trend, you may see this project you create fail and yeah. 
two wow. years from now see a project just like it succeed. Yeah, two years. It happens. It happens a lot. So it, it happens more in TV and film than I than I think in comics. So it's it's definitely happens. Any other questions? I'm so outdated. What what does a good comic book cost? I want to store about I mean, uh, a, a single issue, like a single, like a, a floppy 23 page comic book, something like that, two ninety nine. I remember when they were a nickel. The nickel. And <laughs> I think, I, we, I was just talking to somebody else about this. I think you can kind and of date were, yourself. And they were a new thing, and they were in a fine and dime store in a rack by the register. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what they started. And there were only two or three stores in the hotel that had them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we found them on Spinner Racks when I was a kid, and they were 65 cents. I think. When, when the old guys get together, that's what we say to each other. How old are you? Forty cents. Forty cents. Yeah. Up until a dollar, and then it kept going up. Dollar twenty-five. I remember when it hit dollar twenty-five. I was like, "This yeah. is a magazine." Yeah. That's that's how much a magazine costs. <laughs> yes, sir. Do, the um, two things kind of open and then a leak. The um, the guy told me on the, the music. He makes music. He said I made a thousand songs. I put them on the internet on the pro onto the computer. And he didn't pay to publish them, which is, that's guys to the advantages. And he made a nickel off each one of them when they read them. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you make, how, how many different characters do you have in this um, comic? And if you made a series for each character, put it on the internet and then follow these characters, see who they like the most, maybe those nickels could turn into, you might, somebody might catch that other person's eye and they'll tell you what they're, You'll be able to find out what you said, Trent said, and which one you're, you're, it'll still be your character, mm -hmm. but it might be something that's like, whoa, I didn't realize that because I was busy here. I didn't realize all the jobs were like, oh, this is the guy we like, oh, maybe. Yeah, you don't, I, yeah. Think, I don't think they knew what they had with somebody like Wolverine when they created him, for example. I think he was just sort of a filler character, and then people just responded to him. Yeah. And the next thing you know, Wolverine's in every comic book. He's guest starred. That was a yeah. joke in the 90s about how Wolverine guest starred in everything. It so uh, yeah, but uh, yes, trend trend spotting will keep you. You have like you have like three or four in here. I haven't read it yet. I've flipped through it. I noticed lots. Notice the Pentagon, sir. Uh -huh. the, um, you have like three or four characters in here, or how many do we look for? Oh, so it, the base group is probably an Avenger-sized group with like a rotating cast. What I did was I assumed the universe where the characters are already existing. You know, kind of like if you just jumped into the Avengers universe without really explaining their origins or where they came from, like Captain America, the original Avenger, or the first Avenger, and yeah. start like that. But what I am doing, and that's actually pretty insightful, is I've created this big team of characters. The volume two is, is focuses on one specific character and his yeah. origin, but the other characters are in it, yeah. but they're more guest starring roles. So I'm playing with that. It's already in our store, in the comic shops, the volume two. Volume two, no, that's being worked on at the moment. So volume two is gonna have a 90s feel. All of what I'm doing is kind of uh, exploiting different eras of comics to kind of tell a particular story using cliches that they use from that era. So my book's got a definite 90s artist kind of vibe to it and I'm gonna hopefully have a Rob Liefeld alternate cover to kind of make it as 90s as possible. Yeah. The world's going back to comics. Yeah. So kind of pick up and it's it's a good place. Mm -hmm. Okay. They um, what is it? You, yeah. This, have Have you ever considered not to to just derail, derail you from what where you're working on, mm -hmm. but like have the comic writers sometimes write for if they say Wolverine. We need you to write another Wolverine while you're working on these kind of parallel just to keep things going. Does that happen often? or It does happen. It hasn't happened to me very often, but it does happen. Uh, as I was writing, as I'm writing Retcon, um, a rock musician named Brian Adams read the book, loved the book, found me on Twitter. Again, social media, be present, be somewhere people can find you. Don't just have an email address. Uh, but he reached out to me and he... Uh, and I are working on a comic book series now together, so, and that will be coming out in like 2019. So, so you're still doing the original stuff, original art, mm -hmm. and you've got two things parallel, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely, and that's really the dream. If you can be writing two licensed pieces, like say you're writing Green Lantern and um, a Teen Titans book, right? So you got two licensed books, 
and you got your creator own books out there, that's where you want to be. Yeah. I, 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 sorry to be a bad one. I was trying to talk on that for a minute while I saying Because the, the images that the world is, there's, I don't know, there's like countries. There's, there's, even though there's a hundred different countries, there's already built a hundred different characters, mm -hmm. even 200 characters, a male and a female for each one of those characters, for each one of those countries. And trying to find that new person out there, it's already done, you mm -hmm. know? Not to say, I don't know. I, it's a little more the yin and yang to what's going on. They've already got everything covered so much, every font in our list on it, but we can't make a new font. Mm -hmm. It's so hard, it's already done. Mm -hmm. We just have to get on that train and we have to follow that. Because we can't all have... Well, you, you know, there's... So, with fonts, and I know exactly what you're talking about because I work with letterers a lot who have their yeah, own fonts. Own. They lot develop lot their own, own font. There it's is a thing. Yeah. It's like building your own lightsaber to develop your own font, right? Yeah. So, uh, I get what you're saying, and yeah, there's, there's limits, but that's the thing about comics. Right. As you just spin it just a little bit, it's, it might attract somebody who's never even thought about reading a comic book to come in and start reading that yeah. book, right? Or it may be that, um, yeah, that book existed in a particular format before, but it didn't quite have the same shimmer as when this person came along and, took it and that's what you mean. Yeah. spun it a little bit. And that's what you're hoping for. I, I tend to think of it like fishing. If you're trying to hunt, you're not going to have a good time in comics because that's not how it works. you got to put your piece out there, your bait, and wait and let it sit and yeah. see if big yeah. people are going to come. And yeah. It builds up over time. Yes. yes. Do, you, um, do you find it more enjoyable or more difficult to do objective storytelling that's perhaps event-driven as opposed to subjective st storytelling that's personality-driven? Yeah, I find it way easier to do the, uh, the event-driven stuff because it gives you this ability because since the event is the thing, so mechanically speaking, when I'm writing, I'm able to swap, move between scenes. Say I'm kind of reaching a dead end with a scene between these two characters, right? And I don't really know where to go with it right now. I can stop that scene there and move into another scene with two more characters who are still working on this other problem and deal with that a little bit and it may open up how to bring back these two characters from that scene. So when they're all solving, working on the problem, the problem becomes kind of the character. Uh, character driven stuff, God, I find it so easy to lose myself in the character that the plot meanders. I get more interested in gazing at my shoes, I guess, and why am I wearing them kind of thing, you know, and, and that's what's cool about the character-driven stuff is it's, I mean, that's why I loved Wolverine growing up, is that he was constantly dealing with this same flaw, he wanted to not lose his temper, right? Same thing with the Hulk, but Wolverine was cooler about it. Uh, but, yeah, I enjoy those stories more, I enjoy writing the character-driven stories more, but Event is way easier to write and way more fun. Which which comic character do you, if if you were going to if you were to be a character, personally, which one do you personalize with most? It was Wolverine, but a much more fire. yeah. It was but I grew up you know with two older brothers and okay. you know blah yeah. blah blah. But now that I'm the last at odds with the world, probably Captain America now. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Am I, am I, you know, now that I'm dead, I don't get to be Mr. Temper anymore. No, <laughs> you know? So it's, 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 it's a, a different kind of thing. You got to so be it more does change. It's yeah, it does change. And boy, I would love to see a fight. If they can get those two universes together, they got to bring Hugh Jackman out of the mothballs to have him fight with Captain America. Yeah. I mean, that's, I want to see that. <laughs> you know? yeah. Bigfoot and Wolverine. Bigfoot? Yes. Did he fight Wendigo? He fought yes. Wendigo. Yeah. yeah, that was, yeah. they've been doing the, and I've this is. I've been spending here. Yeah. I've been spending Bigfoot for a long time. Me too. Yeah. I, I've yet to see one. Yeah. Not yet. I got a friend that saw one. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to. Um, Bigfoot makes a, an appearance in Retcon, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I, yeah. He's, it looks like the Andre the Giant Bigfoot. We, that is the Bionic Bigfoot yeah. reference from yeah. the Six Million Dollar Man. Yes, I actually deliberately wanted that one in there. <laughs> Yeah, the artist complied, yeah. but that was a good idea. And so, they wrote the Hulk, mm -hmm. Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, Lou Ferrigno's yeah. Hulk, and that was the Bionic Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that era really made okay. a huge impression on me. And that was, you know, we didn't have the technology to do what we can do now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's why it's like, I see something like the Avengers movie, and I'm just like, I couldn't be more happy. Yes? 
Um, so, I'm a writer, and my friend's an artist, and we were thinking about making a comic book together. Yes. We're both going to, well, she's in college, and I'm about to start college, so mm -hmm. how, Perfect time. got any advice for us, since we're both aspiring artists, I guess? Yeah. To go into the Do as much as you can while you have this kind of, um, I wouldn't say of excessive free time when you're in college, but you have more free time and a lot less pressure, in, in, at least in my memory. So now's the time to capitalize on it. So on nights where you're kind of like, do I want to go out with my friends or do I want to sit down at the table and do some writing or drawing? Maybe opt for option B a couple more times. So spend as much time working as possible, but collaborate. Collaborate, collaborate. Do um, short stories. Start with short stories. If you have somebody who can work with you directly um, and you're already partners, begin with short stories. And you could even consider grabbing a couple characters that you're really fans of that already exist and doing some fan fiction stuff. I recommend doing that. That helps at first to get those muscles built. And then once you understand the ins and outs of how characters work, because by writing fan fiction, you understand the character that you're so fond of a bit better because you say to yourself, no, she wouldn't do that. That's not within her character. So then you understand that character on a deeper level. And then when you create your own characters, you'll be able to understand them from get the get-go on that level because you made them that multidimensional. So work together on not rewriting stories, but maybe go, if you have a favorite character, Maybe go, okay, uh, in between when this adventure happened and this adventure happened, what happened in here? Maybe there was some conflict with mom and dad or something like that, but go with what you want to write now, especially. Explore those things. What, what's your favorite stuff to read right now? I like a lot of sci-fi and fantasy. My mm -hmm. favorite character is actually Samus Aran from Metroid, and so is hers. We like the strong female characters, so. Yes. We just want writing a comment about that sort of thing. Uh -huh. It was like this girl, who, she's really strong, mm -hmm. but she also has a lot of flaws and she kind of fights aliens and stuff. Yes. So we're thinking about writing a comic about that, but we weren't really sure what to do. And so how we're do writing. it, just do it, Nike it, sit down and do it, and do a short one, do a fairly short one, and get it up on the web, all right, and make a web comic out of it. Because as long as you're not making profit off of it, they'll never come after you. It's a fan creation and you're fine doing that. Put that up, and then, for fun, uh, go to Reddit and post it on the gaming subreddit, post it on the comic subreddit, put, post it on the writing comic subreddit. Just post it for fun, do it nonchalantly, don't be like, this is the best thing I've ever done and you will like it. Put it up and go, I don't know, what do you think? And you may get some good feedback from that, and that may lead to the next thing. And I, if I'm not mistaken, that book does get licensed, or that property gets licensed from time to time. So the possibilities out there for you to actually write that character for real someday. But give it your own spin, see where it evolves from there, and, and just enjoy it. But as long as you have somebody to draw your stuff for you, do as much as you can.